Welcome to the Joe Fixes It channel located in Fairmount, Georgia. Here I work on my Mark II Volkswagens and occasionally on my X Mark Metro. Today we're doing a speedometer repair. In particular, we're going to fix the non functioning odometer. This is a very common problem. I see this on almost every car I come across. I have to take the speedometer out and fix it. This is your typical instrument cluster for a Mark II. Uh, this one comes off of a Golf. You can tell because 55 miles an hour is the top of the scale. Where this is a Jetta speedometer and 65 is the top of the scale. They're both interchangeable. You can take a Golf and a Jetta speedometer head and flip them and they're still gonna point to the right speeds. But the thing you gotta remember is uh, don't change the face with another body uh, because then they're not going to be right because the spring tension and where the needle points is going to be off scale. There are two different things that go wrong with the odometer drive. There are two gears, one on each end of a shaft, one is plastic. Uh, after about 35 years it gets brittle and it cracks and it'll slide on the shaft because it's just press fit onto the shaft. And on the other end there's a big pot metal gear that drives all the little numbers. and. Um, I guess with heat expansion it also works loose. Today that's what we're going to fix. Fixing the pop metal gear on these it's a very involved. You have to disassemble the speedometer down quite far. Changing out the little plastic gear and I'm going to show you how to check for those to see if they're bad. Uh, you really don't have to break the speedometer down very far to take it out and replace it. I have a good plug-in drill. I have actually just cut the end of a speedometer cable off and stuck it in the drill and then I got this little gang box and uh, put a plug in it and a rheostat on it so I can control the speed of the drill rather accurately. I've got a black mark on the end of the shaft and a white mark on a tooth so they line up. So when I hook the drill to it it'll spin and they both should stay the same. If the uh, gear turns and the shaft doesn't, then I know I've just got a bad gear and it's probably cracked. That's what happens to them. We've tested it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the plastic gear on this. It's stuck down to the shaft pretty good. It's not actually a very hard fix. You don't have to dismantle the speedometer all the way. To get easy access to that plastic gear, you have to pull this little printed circuit board out of the way. It has four plastic tabs. You just pull on the tab a little bit, pop it loose, and kind of work your way around. And you don't want to break the tabs because if you do that, you're screwed. So after that, you just pop the circuit board out and it slides right out. And now you have easy access to that little red speedometer drive gear. You can get a screwdriver, pry it off, and uh, slide a brand new one right on. As far as the plastic drive gears and replacing them, um, some people like to super glue them back together and then slide them on the shaft and super glue them to the shaft. That does work. Uh, it's maybe not as reliable as it could be. You can actually go on eBay and uh, find these things. I actually have a link in the description below and you're going to pay about 11 or 12 dollars for one of those little plastic gears. But then again, once you put one on, it's likely you'll never live long enough to crack another one. However, today we have a bigger problem. On the other end of that shaft, there's a big pop metal gear that press fits on the end of it that works loose after uh, 30 years of expansion and contraction. In order to get to that, we have to actually disassemble the speedometer head down to its basics. And of course, if you take it apart like that, you're going to have to recalibrate it. See my recalibration video uh, that I did a while back on how to eye calibrate these uh, Mark II speedometers. Well, it's time to take this thing apart, get down, and uh, fix this speedometer head. The first thing we want to do is pull off the needle. you got to be really careful with this thing. It breaks real easy, and if you break it, you cannot replace it. You'll have to find another speedometer head and rob one off of it. I typically just grab a hold of this thing with my fingers and pop it off. If it's been off before, it'll usually come right off like that. If it's been on there forever and uh, you can't pull it off with your fingers, you can get a screwdriver and get a piece of cardboard down there to get up under it and uh, pop it off. That way, use a piece of cardboard, 
so you don't scrape up your uh, speedometer face. There, it pops right off. You set it to the side in a very safe place. The next thing we want to do is remove the speedometer face plate. We don't want to scratch it up. We don't want it to be ugly because when you're driving down the road and you see all these marks all over it, it's just going to ruin your whole day, or at least mine. This is my face plate and it's off. You can see all your numbers. I always like to put a little piece of tape on those numbers to hold them in place. This is the drive gear that's the culprit and we're gonna have to fix that. Before we can pull all four screws, one on each corner, we have to pull this little spring, this little brass spring off the shaft. And that, believe me, is just as simple as doing this. We have to pull all four screws, one on each corner, All right, now we can lift this body away. We can see the uh, little magnet mechanism that uh, drives the speedometer needle that's run on this side by the uh, speedometer cable. That magnet assembly that drives your uh, speedometer needle also has a dual function as a pulse generator for the cruise control. This one doesn't have one in it, it just has a blank on the back for it. This is another speedometer head and it does have a pulse generator attached. Any one of these speedometer heads, you can put one of these in it if you can find one. This is the main drive gear and this is the pop metal gear that I've been talking about. I'm gonna hold my finger on the pop metal gear and turn the gear and you can see that it's not turning. It's, it, in fact, it can't even pull the weight of the speedometer. Because that wheel should be press fit on the end of that shaft and it should all turn. You can see I put my piece of tape over the numbers so when I pull the shaft out partially they won't just go flying everywhere and it'll take me a half hour to get them all back pointing in the right direction. So what I'm going to do since it's not press fit on the end of that shaft anymore I'm just going to pull it out but I'm not going to pull this shaft out all the way otherwise you're going to have to figure out how to get all those numbers back in there right and that can be quite the daunting task. See, I give it a pull, we'll pull it out, and that gear will just fall right out. And you leave all your numbers in place held together by that tape. We need a little hole in the middle to be smaller so it'll press down and stay stuck to the shaft. You may ask, how am I gonna make that hole smaller so it'll stick to the shaft? Well, you use finesse. You take your hammer and your punch, put it right on top your, uh, wheel and give it a couple good taps and now you have a smaller hole. The next trick is to force it over the shaft without breaking the fragile plastic housing. The first thing we need to do is put this gear back in its uh, normal position. You just pull the shaft out a little bit without dropping the little plastic gears off and you can see where it goes on. There you go. Push the shaft up against it to hold it in position. The next operation is you're going to require a very small socket. In this case, I'm using a uh, six millimeter socket, uh, so you don't want to pound directly on that housing. So we'll make sure all these are all lined up and very, very carefully. So you want it to work and turn freely. If uh, it's hard to turn or takes any effort to rotate that shaft by hand, that means that you've probably got this thing uh, driven in there a little too tight and you're gonna have to go on the other end with a very small punch and loosen it up just a little bit. Sometimes I'll put it in a vise if I'm having trouble getting it to go in so it doesn't mushroom the end of the shaft and make it difficult or nearly impossible to get the plastic end of the shaft off if you ever have to replace that. So let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. I have the housing for the speedometer. You take the worm drive gear and you place it right here for when you put the uh, mechanism on. We've got them snugged on there. Uh, 
all we have to do is put this speedometer needle back on. If you notice, there's a little index marker right there. Put it on there real easy so it'll move around. And you just bump it around until it's pointing right at that index marker. Now your speedometer won't be accurate on that index marker. It'll be off by a mile or two an hour. So now that this uh, needle is actually on the uh, shaft, you just take your finger, hopefully clean, and very lightly push down on it and it sticks it to that shaft. You don't want to force it down in there real hard because then you'll have trouble getting it back off. It doesn't take much to keep it on. I've never had one fall off on the road or mess up on me while I was driving from vibration of the engine. That just really doesn't happen. And then the next thing you'll do is just take it and snap it up very carefully, pop it up over the pin, and then you're ready for calibration time. I've got all the speedometer put back together. That's how you fix that pop metal gear. If anybody else has a different method or knows where to get a new one, which I highly doubt because I have spent days and days hunting for speedometer parts. But fortunately, I've got about 10 of those in stock now, so it's not likely that I'll ever run out. So if you found this interesting, if you found this useful, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and we will see you in the next video.